Michael Noak, okay, was just released on bail last night in Miami for and was raped. I mean, I said it was raped. And was charged. Michael Noak, aka Brother Polite, as you guys know him as was just released from Miami. Um, and he was charged with raping his girlfriend, his 14-year-old daughter, okay, in a hotel room. All right, now, and, and before you say, oh, they're just trying to take him down. No, they got his motherfucking seat. All right, so um, defending Nowak, who is Brother Polite, 37, and the victim's mother, Orocho, who's 31, were dating for over a year. And on, I believe, 2-27, 2 2021 at approximately zero hours, defendant Noah requested Mrs. Orocho, who is the daughter, I mean, who is the mom to the daughter, to allow him to take the victim, who's known as T.S., 14 years old, to an after party in order for him to speak to her and mend the relationship between mother and daughter, okay? Defendant Nowak and victim T.S., who is the daughter, responded to, I guess, Club E11. Now, I'm reading it, how it's put into the system, okay? So that's what I have is a printed out report. So I guess they went to Club 11. It was on 29 Northeast 11th Street, Miami, Florida. Upon arriving, the club was closed. Defending Nowak and the victim T.S. Uh, went to a hotel room at 1100 West Avenue, Unit 319, Miami Beach, in order to wait for the new party location. While they were in his hotel room, the defendant, uh, Noah, provided the victim, who was 14, with numerous alcoholic beverages in which she consumed. Uh, the victim, who's 14, stated that the defendant, Noah, started dancing and, I guess, touching her inappropriately all over her body, groping her, you know, and, um, you know, groping her thighs and her butt. And furthermore, the victim, um, who is his girlfriend's daughter, uh, stated that defendant Noah sat her on the bed as he pulled out his, you know, and outside of his boxers, okay, shorts, underwear, while he grabbed her head and pushed it towards his genital area and victim T.S. lost consciousness, okay? Now, he's supposed to be a conscious leader. And that little girl, like, oh, okay. Um, uh, she later awoke while the defending Noah was forcibly trying to make her throw up by pushing his fingers in her throat and down her throat. Defending Noah, who is Brother Polite, okay? Then took victim T.S. to her mother's hotel, uh, who was staying at another hotel in Miami on Collins Avenue where Ms. Orocho noticed, who is the mom to the daughter, that the victim, T.S., was severely intoxicated and possibly under the influence of an unknown drug. And victim, and the 14-year-old victim had severe swelling on the victim's mouth, lips area. Defendant Noak, who is brother polite, told his girlfriend, Ms. Orocho, not to call the police because if she did, she would ruin his career. This is exactly what he stated, okay? After she, uh, he told her, don't call the police because she will ruin his career, Ms. Orocho, the mother to the 14-year-old daughter, transported the victim, her daughter, to Mount Sinai Hospital where she disclosed sexual battery. Uh, victim, uh, T.S., the 14-year-old victim, was transported to Roxy Bolton, uh, I guess, rape treatment center that was in Miami where all her clothing was collected and a kit was performed and collected. Said evidence was transported to Miami-Dade County Forensic Lab where it was analyzed on 5-4-2021. Results from Miami-Dade Forensic Labs were received where it confirmed that the victim, T.S., had a total of six semen stains, confirmatory stains on her shirt and scarf. A DNA warrant was obtained and, and served to defendant Brother Polite, who is Noah, on 6-8-2021, the DNA sample swap was transported to Miami-Dade Forensic Lab for analysis, and on 8-10-2021, last week, the Miami-Dade Forensic Report was received where it confirmed the semen was found on victims, the TS, clothing match the defendant Noah, okay? He was since arrested, he has bonded out, and... <laughs> 
Oh, peace, brother. Polite. Hey, what's up, King? Well, I want you to know I'm live. Do you want to talk or no? I'm actually traveling, but what's going on? All right. I'm quite sure you see the internet is lit up. People is talking crazy. And um, Yeah, I'm just, I'm just telling me something crazy. Yeah, people are talking crazy that um, you had molested a 14-year-old girl. I don't know how true it is. That's why I said I'm not going to jump out the window. I'm not saying none of that until we can find out what's really good. And um, I don't know if you want to talk or we could set something up probably tomorrow whenever you can stop traveling or whatever. Now, you, know, you know we don't play those games. Just okay. like when niggas was coming at me with all the goofy shit before. Okay. okay. You know, when people make serious charge, when people make serious allegations like that, you know YouTube ain't the place where you deal with it. Got you. I got you. Know, you I stay with our own fucking legal team. You know what I'm saying? Say less. But what I'll tell you is this. You know, I ain't no fucking weirdo. You see all the beautiful, voluptuous people I be with. Yeah. So I ain't a weirdo. That's what it is. But I, I know what it is for people. Yeah. When you make a very yeah. negative accusation against mm. somebody, some accusations are so negative, you be like, yo, that shit's so negative. It got to be true because who would say something that negative? Damn. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So that's yes. how that shit is. But you know, I ain't gonna speak on it any further. But I, I tell you this: if I if I accuse somebody of some shit, niggas don't buy into it. Niggas don't. Niggas hate me. But if somebody accuses me of something, it's always true. But I'm always walking around free. Right. It's always true. But I'm always free. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But I just Say got no wind more. of it. Say no more, man. But no you know. More. Love you, man. Thank you for even uh, right. just asking me. All right. You know, and being no, a no, brother, no. just asking. Yes. But uh, I thank you very much. But you know how we got to do when it comes to this type of goofy shit. You got to leave it in the hands of the people right. that deal with that kind of negativity. There you go. You know what I, I'm saying? I agree. I agree. <laughs> but, All right. Peace. Yes, I can't man. do it in the world of YouTube. Peace. All right. So that's why I was saying, Sutek, that I'm not going to jump out the window and just say some crazy right, shit. Right. All right, all right, all right. I just want to show some proof of Polite's case. He does have a sexual battery case against a minor. Miami-Dade County, Florida arrest, right? Miami-Dade County, Florida arrest. And it has all the arrest in the past 24 hours, which was 355 of them in Miami. And guess who was one of them? Let's go. Let's go. Miami-Dade County arrest list. You see? Everybody is in Miami. 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 Except who? Let me clean my... Hold on. Let me clean my motherfucking... Dang, so people can see straight. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Bam. 815. Brother Polite, a.k.a. Michael N. Nook. Michael Nook. 815, which was two days ago. He bailed out maybe this morning. Okay. Here's his address in Los Angeles, California. Cause you know he lives in LA. And he got arrested in Miami. You know he lives in LA. And got arrested in Miami. You know he lives in LA. And then when you put the zip code in, which I did. Hold on. Cause I told y'all he live in West LA cause I live in Los Angeles. So I know what polite hang out. I told you he hang in LA with all the, the freaks and he hangs out with all the gays, and that's why he was with the tranny that time. And yeah, what is 90036 area code? Let me show you where it is. I live out here. Bam. Los Angeles, Fairfax, Melrose, Milka Wall. Excuse me, Miracle Mile, Park, La Brea, Wilshire, LA, right? It's kind of a Hollywood, West LA area. I don't fuck around over there unless I'm just taking care of some business. So, let's go back. Michael Nowak lives in Los Angeles. Here's his zip code. The nigga's 38 years old. Right? That's gone over. Just talking about the um, the property and the... Um, excuse me. Right here. Um, average gross income of the arrestees. <laughs> zip code. Okay? So, in his zip code... The average price is about right. And what does it say? Charge. 
charge one, oops. I didn't mess something up, hold on. Hot diggity dog. Okay, I'm going back at it. Okay, so what, you guys said say, charge one, what's his charge? Six shit. And when you put this in, engage, hold on. When you put that in Google, sexual battery, rape. Another charge, charge two, sexual battery. Okay, sexual battery, sexual battery, rape, that's what these charges are. You see where it says sex right here? <laughs> you see, sex, battery, and they have the ages, I believe, because if it's under 12 years old, it is a capital felony, and you can do life. I mean, so right here, I believe it's the 12 to 17 year old. It said that she was 14. And the D is for, I guess he was an adult over 18. Okay, that's what this is basically saying. Child was between 12 and 14. Excuse me, 12 and, and 17. Um, he's an adult, 18. Sexual battery. All these niggas, they think it's fake and shit. 815, Michael Nowak lives in Los Angeles. That's his zip code. This is a Miami-Dade County, Florida arrest. They arrested 355 people in the past 24 hours. They keep stats. These are arrest stats. Okay? Okay? These are the charges right here. Michael Nowak. That is the case number right there. Those are charges. That's only the charge one. See? Engage, CH, FA, sex. Oops. See? Engage, CH, FA, sex. That's charge one. There's a charge two. And that's that charge right there. So, not too many people on this list so far. I can keep going, but it's just... The first night. Not too many people have a charge two. If it is, it says bench warrant or whatever, or no valid driver's license. But he has a charge two, sexual battery. This is also sexual battery rape or something like that. So, like when you put it in, wait, wait. Sexual battery, 12, 17, 18, guess what pops up? Sexual battery and rape in Florida. Understanding sexual battery and rape charges in Florida. That's what this nigga's convicted of. Raping and sexual battery, they call it. Okay? Of a minor. 14 years old. The nigga y'all looked up to, who I've been telling you for, for since he came on the scene, fucking with that real estate bullshit. I've been telling you niggas for 10 years, he's a fraud. And a habitual liar. And a snake. I got videos on my all of my YouTube proving. I've exposed this nigga all over 10 times. With concrete proof of, of, of three different scams. Concrete proof. And niggas still just, oh, whatever, we love polite. You sick bastards. You niggas is one and the same. That's why. See, when a man know a motherfucker, another man, man is sick, and he's an upright, righteous man, he doesn't fuck with that man. So anybody fucking with polite, People call him the GOAT. That's my boy. Leave polite alone. All these kind of niggas. They're birds of a feather. They're the same niggas who think it's okay and would do the same fucking sexual battery he did. I'm telling you what it is. Listen to Chief X. Umar Johnson, all of them. Tariq Nasheed. These are, 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 are habitual liars and frauds. And I can't wait till the rest get exposed. Umar Johnson was praising Dr. York, knowing he was a convicted child molester. The biggest child molestation case in the United States of America history. That's a fact. Dr. York, Umar Johnson want little boys and shit. 
but don't even take care of his two girls he got. Never paid a penny for his two girls he got. But he wants your boys. And he's just saying, and he's praising Dr. York, wishing Dr. York get out. At the same talk, time, talking about bring me your kids. And been scamming y'all. I was the first one, the first eight years ago to expose Umar Johnson and that property because I was a realtor and I called the realtor of that school he was looking at, that first college he was looking at when he first made his announcement. I called that realtor and we had a talk for 30 minutes. Jewish man, real cool. He said all Umar did was come down to the school, make a YouTube video and told him a little about what he was going to do, wanted to do, but never met with him again. Never chopped it up to talk business at all and bounced. And I said, that's strange. I said, he didn't even make an offer. No offer. No nothing. He made the video because he never intended on in opening a school. He made the video and bounced because he wanted to use that video to get donations. I, I was the first one to. I've been exposed. Everybody I exposed and said is a fraud and bullshit is that. Or I wouldn't say it. I'm not the kind of guy that's just going to badmouth people for no reason. Because selfless acts of love make you disciplined because it makes you put others before yourself in balance. Some people are suckers, so they put others before themselves because they got insecurity issues, low self-esteem. But for powerful people filled with esteem, it's our balance to conduct selfless acts of love and put our children or our significant other before us while still pursuing our goals. But if you're not commissioning yourself to do anything out your way for someone else, there's chemical imbalance. And therefore you'll overcompensate when you do get some money or do get some opportunity. Or you become an entitled individual. You get a false sense of entitlement because you want so much given on to you just because you are a woman or whatever that you think you are as a man or female. When you make enough money, you find out if you're really going to cheat because you got the money to cheat properly. You got the money to cover up lies. You got to make enough money to find out who you really are. Though. Make enough money, you know, you could have bought some children. About hundreds. If you're really cooking. When you have enough money, you find out who you really are. See if you actually are still a family man or family woman when you make enough money. I have so many ancestors that's been living vicariously through me that enjoy every luxury vehicle, every unnecessary expensive meal, every place that I travel around the world, my ancestors love and adore me. They live in me. They embrace it. We, we struggled for way too long. So, for the last three years, I've always told people, and I'm gonna prove that I've been right. <laughs> I knew I was right. So I told people, polite, don't own no home or a car. He rents everything or leases. He, he gets them fancy cars because you know how they let celebrity or somebody um, drive around in a car to market it and you know show it around. Maybe they can get some sales because people will see this celebrity in the car. I think that's what he does with the cars. Now, I told people he doesn't pay rent wherever he moves because he moves in. I said this before Sam Netter did, okay? Because I was wondering, people when you're in LA, people don't move and be in a different home every five and six months. I said, since Polite been here, he's been in at least six different properties. Because I realized where he, where he recorded. I said, that's a different house. That's a different house. How is every six months he's in a different house? And I said, I told people because he doesn't pay rent. And he gets in there and screws over whoever. The way he gets in there is he probably will pay two months rent and give him an extra deposit. People take that. I've done that. I gave him an extra deposit. Hey, shit, you can have it. And he gets in there. But once you get in there, he'll wait till they take him to court. And he won't pay. He doesn't pay rent. Then he got to leave. Watch. But I'm going to show you the proof. Hold on. It's your house. Why do you think you change crib from crib to crib to crib? It's not yours, polite. You, you're talking to somebody who know you, nigga. And, and believe me, I got data on you. But see, what you say about me, it's all good. I don't give a fuck about that. 
But the shit I got on you is real shit. But like, you don't want to go there. Picture that. I bought my shit with my money from now. Now. This is, remember I showed you this, is, is it, I told you the park, La Brea area, remember I showed you earlier? Right? That, that was the zip code. This is the area he lives in, look. LLC versus Michael Nowak, polite. The apartment building took his ass to court because he wasn't paying rent. On February, 2018, an unlawful detainer residential he was being evicted because he wasn't paying rent category unlawful detainer residential we took his ass to court because he wasn't paying rent on that day That's the area he lived in, West LA. In this <coughs> business, La Parc La Brea, A LLC versus Michael Newell took his ass to court in LA County because the nigga don't pay rent. He never pays. He beats every motherfucking body and keeps every little penny he can get that he scams off people. Didn't I tell y'all this years ago? And I just had a hunch because I know that's how it works. You don't move. It's just like when someone says, oh, I got a new phone number. Yeah, it was too much drama. People bothered. I got me a new phone number. That's straight bullshit. All that means is they couldn't pay their cell phone bill and it got cut off. That's what they saying. People just don't get new phone numbers when they had numbers for a while, friends and family, maybe business, maybe a job might call them or whatever. They don't, no, your phone got cut off because you didn't pay the fucking cell phone bill and was broke. Keep it real. Anybody tell you they sell, they got a new cell phone number, that means they couldn't pay their fucking cell phone bill. Y'all just got up, y'all believe any old motherfucking thing. The nigga wasn't paying rent. Unlawful detainer. He's a lame and he's always been a lame. Stealing money from people. Selling fake ass books. Fake ass real estate shit he sell. And you can't find one person that said, damn, I'm balling now because of what Polite uh, um, taught me or gave me. Nobody you can find. You can't find nobody that will, that, that will rep for anything, any class polite talk, and they came up off of it, or it worked. All them people for years, when he first came on the scene, that he was taking around, talking about, you, you can get this property, just bid on it, and get this land for a dollar. None of them, none of them got, got, got anything good, or came up, or thrived from anything polite told them, or they thought they got. Niggas wasn't even getting no land because they realized they couldn't build on the shit. All them scams and money I've been telling you about. You gullible idiots. Y'all was trying to curry favor and position yourself. I told you, you guys, I said these words I've been saying for the same years. You niggas know for a fact he's a fraud and scammer and a piece of shit. And you sell out for views. I said, ain't nothing wrong with getting views and getting some views on your channel and trying to get views. That's what everyone tries to do. But when you sell out to do it, that's what I lose respect for you. Anybody that call polite his boy, call polite the goat, uh, all this, you like polite and all this shit, all you niggas was, is fake. You just like the, the kid in the neighborhood looking up to the drug dealer as somebody important. It carries on to a dope. You know, everybody in the hood looked up to the dope man. You niggas is the same way as immature ass adults. 
you looked up to Polite because he was making money. And you seen him with a bunch of bisexual women all the time, including his what he calls his wives, who he's not married to legally. Those are his two girlfriends. He got two girlfriends. And all, what they do is they find other beautiful women around a, a, a Hollywood or wherever, and they all freak together, like I told you. Polite, uh, uh, so-called fake wives are bisexual women. And that's how he's allowed to be with other women, because they like him to bring them home. Let's all freak and party and drink and do our thing. That's what they do. I told you when I was in, when he was doing that fake ass uh, uh, police brutality case and had um, attorney Malik Shabazz. I'm skeptical about his ass. Who the hell has he ever defended? When they had attorney Shabazz flew out here and they put on a fake ass, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, and talking like a show. And he had this fake ass police brutality case. I told you, polite uh, little daughters or whoever these people is with, that was all LBGT. LBGT, cute, however you say it. <laughs> I seen all they, they look gay friends and toe and shit. I said, yeah, they in that Hollywood, West LA life, fucking with, with the trannies and the LBGT community and partying and. And, and screw in, and that's how he's allowed to do that. They love polite to find pretty girls. I know all about it. I'm 51 years old. Shit. I didn't been, been there and done it all. I used to, I've been to little, little, little freak parties. You know what I mean? When a man gotta come with two women or he can't get in. You understand? I've been around. Little freak parties all over, set up. You know, you pay a little seventy-five dollars. If you're a man, you got to come with, 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 with uh, 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 you can't come without a woman, but a woman can come without a man. Yeah, I know the rules. <laughs> I know how they get down. I'm just, I'm talking to you with wisdom. That's what they do. I'm out of here, you suck.